continues at the free throw line will shoot that bonus. So that's a four point play, the second one. Yes. Scored by San Miguel by San in this Miguel. game. And they're now within one. Where is the offense going to come from for Ginebra San Miguel? San Miguel's defensive intensity definitely at a high. Nine on the shot clock. Two of it, last clip, and a three and a foul against Hunteveros. It's going to be a, a four point play in the offense for Ginebra and Hunteveros. Giving up the foul, Kubit responding to the situation. You watch that pass coming from Eric Mack. That was a long three-point shot. And Kubit making sure that he got the call, he tumbled down. Yes. Again, that's the salesman. That's the salesman's job. The familiar chant. That... You know, that took a lot of heart. Oh. And you, you talk about desire. <laughs> and the intensity that Barangay never needs to finish this game. And I think Ronald Tubit exemplified that in that situation. Returning the compliment of the four-point play, and now Patricia Eason joins us again. Well, you know, Ronald Tubit really vowed na didikdikin niya sa defensa itong si Don Don Antiveros because he actually got drilled in the last game by Coach Jong by having some defensive lapses. He's certainly making up for it now in the first half. He also got drilled on the right shoulder by Dorian Peña. He wasn't sure if he was going to get his shooting rhythm back, but obviously he did. Back to yourself. This is no game between sisters, I can tell you that. Now, this is fierce. The, the battle we're watching now is extremely fierce. Well, actually, every game in this yes. series has been and fought fiercely. You're so correct, and that's why the fans have come out to watch this here at the Coliseum. And you out there have joined us throughout the four and now the five games. 76-71, San Miguel cannot pull across nor grab the lead. And there's another whistle. Is it Freeman? He's smiling. But it's not exactly a smile of glee. Fifth personal foul on Freeman. Dave Freeman, he had just checked in, and he was called for an inconsequential foul. Oh, that's a nice description. Because he didn't have to foul. Oh, yes, indeed. Two minutes going by us here. Uh, right now, he, he's a very frustrated man on the floor. Mankwell just attacked Freeman inside. Baragay Nebra now has momentum back. And uh, Mank now with 11. Vasella trying to settle down his troops. Chris Freeman back to Rara. Olsen shopping around here. Spinisi. Shot clock winding down to seven. Downstairs to Freeman. We'll try to get some offense going before that fifth personal foul. It won't stay down. Ball is fought for. Gone, gone. And so many players playing volleyball, actually. And fingers got pushed out of position. Tubin is called for the foul. That will be four on Tubin. Time remaining, 9.28, seven point in every lead. Cortez is back on the floor. He's eating up Antiveros' minutes. I thought Don Von Custodio also did a pretty good yes. job in uh, changing the pace of the game in, in the third, third period. Yeah, you're right. That combination with Cortez actually did them so much good. And a push by Rivas. Nice play that time they gave Fingers in isolation against Rivas. Out to Branson Mink on this. KFC delivery assist of the quarter. McMahon delivers a KFC. Just that 887 KFC is finger looking good. You know, I was outside the KFC and I said, why do I know that number? 887-88 Of course, uh, that's the number to call. KFC. Here's Gabe Freeman getting a foul from David Noel. Fourth and Noel. For the chickens. Two shots for Gabe Freeman. And this is the thing to have on this time when you're managing your health for MC, the official vitamins of the PBA. Proud sponsor of the final series of the 2009 Motolite PBA Fiesta Conference. One more custodian, by the way, is back on the floor. We were just talking about him. 
Meet Gabby Simons is part of our group. All right, you know, Gabe Freeman thinks this is just another game of who wants to win more. Although he talked about having a very hard time dealing with the fans, he says they are just all over the place cheering for the Kings. He also said trading baskets with Ginebra is like fighting with a bear. It will never be easy because they just don't stop fighting. This is a make or break for him. He wants to forget about his fouls and play aggressive to get, to get game five. Seth, can you go? And trying to forget the fouls will be hard. And he, can, he could not do anything defensively there as Meg just attacked him. In the meantime, here comes Noel. And a foul by Pinisi. They'll call it as a flagrant foul. John Wichiger is already on the floor and no movement at all on the side of San Miguel. This is a turning point for this game. Watch this again. There's Mick Pinisi. That's a chop. And that's a good call. That's a flagrant one. Very clearly, he wasn't going for the ball. You see, you see right there, he went for the shoulder. He went for the body of David Noah in an effort to try to stop the shot. But you don't do that. Mick Pinisi acknowledging the foul, but it's going to be a flagrant one for sure. That means Pinisi will now sit five minutes because that will be the second flagrant foul against San Miguel. Second foul, penalty one on Mick Pinisi. Mick out of the play. Oh, he's out. Is that his second flagrant? I think yes. It, his second technical I foul. Is. I think he had a technical foul earlier technical. For, yeah. for, for profanity. Yep, remember. So, the, yep. Because he said uh, this, earlier, no, you're yep. uh, for, for, uh, using profane language. Exactly. And he's in shock. So one technical foul plus one flagrant foul one will mean he's gone. So I take back what I said. He would have sat down five minutes on the second flagrant one call against San Miguel. But because he had that earlier technical foul, he's gone. He's ejected. Seven Boy. points and four rebounds. Left the referees with that look of his. Dagger looks. And I remember he, he went out once and he said, kept, kept saying, look at the tape, look at the tape. Now San Miguel brought down that lead from 18 to 1. To 1, yes but could not pull across. Here's Noel shooting off those, uh, that played with foul. Uh, this, is, this is a big momentum shifter again, yes. because he never with two free throws, then possession coming up. Series aside, you know that. You can see that on your screens. Uh, team that gets uh, this game could have a clear, could have an advantage and could be a champion by Wednesday. We'd like to thank Gatorade, the official sports drink of the PBA, is it in you? Here's Mank. Pakana decides to pass off at the last moment, almost a free conversion there. Nine on the shot clock. Noah checked the shot clock quickly. Pakana providing the shield, the high looping shot is good! And David Noah now with 21 points. And they're screaming and they're roaring here, the Barangay Hinebra fans. 47 second mark of the fourth quarter is a three point basket. Our official score, 85 okay. to 73 in favor of the Bandai Africans. They reviewed the tape and they now made that shot by Hontiveros a three point conversion. And now it is down to 825, 85 to 73. In any event, we'll be all together on Wednesday and here at this venue for game number six. As to whether it will end on that day remains to be seen, of course. But we'd like you to be here with us on that day or for the rest of the week, whatever the case may be. Pakana just can't get a steal without the foul and a bit of a streak of uh, unluckiness on the part of you know, Pakana. It's just aggressive defensively, though. Now, San Miguel already in the penalty. That's 8.15 to go in this game. Yeah, That's no. a lot of time. Cortez, quick release. Ah, and he's beginning to miss. This tip in works. And Freeman with 14. You know, that's what he brings to San Miguel, the offensive rebounding and the fact that he can, he has that high jumping ability to give them second chance opportunities. Let's see if he can manage to hit his uh, average 21 in the series. Here's Noel sees a bit of daylight. Ooh. A 
right now, there's nobody from San Miguel who can stop David Noel. They need to double-team him because he's just going to score from the outside or blow past Mark Pinkney's defense.